let's have a look at an actual medical application of facial landmarks. This is an area of medical research I'm actually working on right now. Nothing published yet, but I, I'll i probably do more on this publicly on YouTube, certainly in the future. But let's, let's take a look. So here I go ahead and run the, this, this Jupyter notebook in Colab, and it does assume that you're using CUDA because some of these libraries that I'm making use of here are CUDA only, it's the way it is. And we're gonna look at blink efficiency. So when you blink, a blink is a very, very fast procedure. You can record a blink with high speed camera. Usually both of your eyelids close and reopen quite quickly. That's how a blink is supposed to work. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes one eye will be lagging due to often neurological issues. So we're going to look at how you can measure that. You can literally see the, 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 the problem as it unfolds quite quickly. And I just use the basic slow-mo capabilities on an iPhone because we're trying to make this so that we can capture it even in a clinical setting with as common of hardware that you would have just in a normal uh, observation room. So here we go ahead and we install SPIGA and FaceNet. FaceNet is going to actually find the face. SPIGA is going to find the features and the features become very important here and we'll see why in just a moment. So that installs it completely and we're going to make use of really two different images here. I'm going to show you first for um, an actual person afflicted with this, I have permission to use the image. It's actually my wife. She went through um, needing to have a nerve graft uh, done at Johns Hopkins to restore uh, some of this uh, ability for her. So this is a great personal connection for me in a way that I, can, I was able to work with Johns Hopkins to use to come up with some techniques for measuring these kind of things. There'll be more coming on that in the future. But here you can, you can see basically I begin this first process. I'm looking, I'm finding using MTCNN, I'm finding the face that is in the field of view and we're going to create a bounding box that goes around it. And then you, uh, you, you basically put the, uh, use the SPIGA to find the actual facial features. In this case, we're looking particularly at the eyes because we're gonna be analyzing frame by frame as somebody blinks. Then we're going to do a number of things here that we are going to use to basically get the actual measurements because we're going to want to know the actual area of the eye that's exposed. When you close your eyes, it would go to zero. When you're, they're wide open, it would be whatever that maximum value is. And we wanna report this actually in millimeters, not in pixels. So what we do is we calculate the pupil length, which is the length between your, your, your pupils, landmarks 96 and 97 on SPIGA, and we calculate how many pixels that is. It's typically around 62 millimeters for most people is the distance between that. So now we've sort of got our legend and we can then use the shoestring algorithm. That's basically just gives you a list of points. So the points that go around each of the eyes and that's a, that's a the shoestring algorithm is, is really quite simple. I mean, it, it, it basically is this poly area. I just copied this honestly from uh, from Stack Overflow, and I'm sure ChatGPT copied it from Stack Overflow, so you could you could also uh, get it from there as well. But I, it's it's a pretty simple procedure. You just get those facial landmarks that make up the area around the eye, and what we then do is we calculate the two different eyes. We measure the polygon for the left eye. We measure the polygon for the right eye. I'm doing left and right eye based on the actual patient. And then we, we can print the results. So the actual results you can see here, this is from the patient who, who in this case is my wife. Uh, this was a high speed image that we made of her as she was blinking. And you can see pretty well into, into the blink, 
She is able to close her right eye completely, but the left eye is not completely closed. Now this causes some dry eye issues and, and other things. So we're, we're going through the, the, the procedure on that, but you can certainly see the left eye and the right eye and the, and the difference. The procedure that she actually went through is something called an acoustic neuroma, which is a non-cancerous brain tumor, but it does mess with often your facial nerve that and she required a graft to get that better. So you can see a quick clip that I did here where you literally see the nerve graft that Johns Hopkins University uh, helped her and literally restored her smile over a number of months. So anyway, this is an area that I am interested in because obviously there's a, there's a family connection there and there's a lot more to come with this that I am using computer vision that will certainly probably show you in the future. So thank you for watching this video and uh, if this is useful, definitely click the like button, uh, subscribe so that you don't miss a thing.